Hello everybody, welcome to the Sound Test Room. Today we are taking a look at the Expressive E Touche. Now this is the the, uh, the the top model. There's two models. There's this one and the Touche SE. For using this with your iPad, you only need the Touche SE. You only need it with the USB connection. I'm going to explain how it all is set up and everything and, and how you can get it to work with your iPad because I couldn't find any tutorials on it for the iPad and uh, I must say uh, let me just say that as a disclaimer to, uh, the Expressive E sent me the Touche for reviews and demos um, so yes so thank you to them it's very kind because it's very nice um, okay so first of all I'll give you a demo of kind of thing you can do with it uh, but really you're only limited by your imagination and your ability to root stuff yeah, it works with the iPad, but also the the lesser version also works with the iPad. That's the that's the key thing. I'll show you the the connections on this, and in future videos we'll do some with the you know uh, the, the software kind of thing, but also with CV. That's the difference between this and the SE. But if you only wanted to use it with the uh, iPad, you know, and the SE would be fine. Anyway, I've got it with Shimmer Verb here and um, Synthmaster One. I'm going to be playing the little keyboard here and then doing certain things with the touche. So you'll hear the kind of cool stuff you can do. Okay, then, let's go. With this particular setup, what I did was you can see for the the right control, like so the right hand side here is controlling the mix on the shimmer verb. To the left is controlling the ribbon like this. And then on Synth Master 1, we have the frequency being controlled by the push here at the top. And I had the range set quite high, like so from zero to four. And then push down is con controlling the volume. So the controller itself, so you have four MIDI CCs that are kind of pre-assigned. You can assign them if you if you want to go and uh, adjust them in the software, that's cool, you can. Um, but the actual assignments are the top is CC17. The bottom is CC16. And then to the left is CC18, and then the right is CC19. And these are like the predefined controllers. So as long as you can change the routing, or you're going to have to go into the Expressive E software and set the actual CCs to suit whatever you can't control sort of thing. 
but it's very very cool okay josh the, the 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 you don't need this version to to do what i'm doing with the ipad okay there is a cheaper version i i think it's like half the price i think this is about 400 euros and then i think that the cheaper version is like half the price 199 or something like that but honestly I, you you know prices vary as they go but i honestly don't know the exact pricing because i obviously expressively sent me this for review but you can do some very, very cool stuff with it, obviously. Now, you're not just limited, as you saw, you're not just limited to controlling, uh, like, the, the cut-off on. I could also have assigned CC17 um, to something on something else as well. So you can get very, very, very creative. It's very, very cool. I don't think the cheap version is over £300, Colin. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I think it's. I don't think it is. I mean, I. Don't, I mean, I might be wrong, but I didn't. I thought it was cheaper than that. I honestly did. But anyway. So with that one, that's what we were doing with with that kind of setup. And all I all needed to do, it. It's on Amazon the SE. What and it's it's over. Uh, that's what three hundred pound for the cheap version. I've definitely seen it cheaper than that. Somewhere. No, they haven't done a keyboard yet, Tark, I don't think. They are doing a keyboard. They're, they're working on a keyboard called the Osmos. Uh, that's uh, very, very expensive. Anyway, so then when you've got your happy, you can save your setup as a, as a thing inside AUM or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, I set up another one here. So let's have a look at another one. So this first one that I set up, ignore this channel. I haven't used it. I used uh, Tal Uno Uno LX, and and now notice I don't have to do anything now because it's all all pre pre set up. We're just good to go, and also uh, Bleach Reverb. So I, I've got to the right 19 control in a moderate and a dry wet. Now you can you can set the sensitivity of how this works so for instance like very light pressure but th this encoder here this encoder here you'll see that there's some dots across the uh, top of it there if i just switch these on you'll see that there's four of them if i turn them down the sensitivity is now less if i turn it full on i have to press a lot less uh, there you go you see I told you didn't I told you it was less Colin that's it you can get it you can get it cheaper So cool. So that was that example. I'll run you through another example, and I'll, I'll, I'll basically show you how you set it up. It's 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 really really easy. It's exactly just exactly the same as mapping any MIDI controller to any parameter, which is very very cool. So the next one I did was I think was I can't remember now. I've lost track. Two shape two. I think was that the okay. So Sunriser. This one has spiders patches in Sunriser. I map certain things to. So that's a bit loud. Let me turn the volume down. So you'll notice that on, on the, pu the push up is controlling the cut off the track as well. 
and also the noise. And I might not have assigned any other, oh yeah, I'm gonna sec, envelope amount is to the left. And the right. So depending on where you want to assign, it's very expressive. And the last one I I did, I think was was it maybe two shade three? Oh, I can't remember the blinking numbers now. That's the first one. And um, let me just see. Might have been this one. No, I could. So it could have been two. Bear with me, guys. Might have been one. Here we go, this is one. So this is Alpha. So here's the pattern. I've assigned certain things in Alpha to the various parameters. And we can go in and see what I've assigned and where I've assigned. If you go to MIDI control here, notice the control sources, I have the two shape picked up. This is for mapping. I've also got it locked on to two shape main port. Okay, so that's what you do on the iPad, two shape main port. Artoria key step as the MIDI controller keyboard. You must have the to the I must point out as well that the only way to get this to work, you do 100 percent need a powered hub, okay, to power the touche. The touche requires power. So but a powered hub is absolutely fine. I've got this going into the Artoria audio fuse, and also the key step is going into the audio fuse as well, because the audio fuse is also a powered USB hub, apart from being the audio interface and the MIDI interface. And just the mixer, it's also a USB hub, and you'll take you can take three USB ports into the audio fuse. So this and this is going into the audio fuse and taking its power from that. Other than that, we're just using the MIDI CC controllers mapped to the various parameters. So if we open up there, go to MIDI control, I've already got the source set to the Touche main port. If we go down to Bleece Alpha here and then go to parameters, we can scroll down until we see what parameters I've got assigned where. And there we go, there's the first one. Filter cutoff to CC17. Okay, then filter two cut off to CC16 and then filter decay to CC18 and probably something else further on, maybe, maybe not. I think that was about, about me lot. So with this particular patch, you can do all sorts of cool stuff because it's got a, a an arpeggiator. So we could just hold the arp. Not on this, we can't do. Uh, I'll just start. No, I can't. Let me just hold the notes.
can see it's very, <laughs> it's very, you, once the sensitivity is set, I mean, the sensitivity is only set on half there. So for instance. <laughs> So the AUBM software on the iPad is free. It is absolutely not free, no. It is not free. Oh, hi, Daniel. So I think it's time we set it up with something uh, completely different so we can clear that. So you can see that each of the projects just remembers all the settings and everything, just like a, that's how brilliant AUM is. It just is solid. Let me, before we set up a new one, let me show you the... Um, the rear of the so on the on the back of this one if you buy the se one which is kind of like the cheap the, the cheaper version okay um you've got the usb hub like that but you don't have any of the controls so you have midi out and midi in with the breakout cables which you also get if you buy the more expensive one but you also have cv one two three and four and the cv numbers also correspond to uh the various uh for patches uh for directions on the actual top of the controller you can also take this off it's held on with a magnet okay and underneath there are more adjustments for adjusting things like the sensitivity and then you can change these kind of things out as well it's all very uh cool 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 bit cool beans cool bean stuff and this is the kind of thing that controls the pressure on the top and then underneath as well you can take this off as well because it's just like a nice covering thing like this underneath there are more settings for the pressure down as well so it's very nice and you just basically drop this back on like this and you're good to go with your control so it's customized. Well, you can also get different colors of these uh, the touch plates as well. So that's pretty cool. Right. Okay. So let's set up another one here. Let's go with a continuer because I was playing with that earlier like this. And it's a nice one to see because it has nice big controls. So you can see how, how the mapping is actually going on. Let me have a drink. I'm thirsty. Hope you were all all right, folks, as well. Right, let's go. Let's go and see what parameters are exposed so we can set them up. Yeah, it's part, yeah, yeah, the, the, the AUM system, uh, 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 PyTox, it remembers absolutely everything. I mean, there's uh, these are all saves. These are all, um, sorry, files. These are all sessions that I've done over the last, I don't know, ages and ages. Um, and there's just, just hundreds of them. These are all like the live streams. And all I do is just save the actual information. And some of these things are, are absolutely huge. You know, they're using tons and tons of stuff. So let's go. MIDI control. MIDI sources. I've already pre-selected it. So it will just remember. AOM will just remember the last MIDI controller you, you think. But you can you can have many MIDI controllers. You know, I could set the key step 37 to be a MIDI controller and then start using these rotary encoders. You, you know that kind of thing, how it works. Let's go back there. And let's go to our continuer channels and no matter how many things on all, all the channels and everything so if you can get to the uh, parameters then you'll be absolutely cool right so continuer parameters and we can now see we can continue as macro so we could assign something to a macro if we found out what a particular macro does which we might do in a minute but let's get with the simple stuff first okay so first of all Oscillator shape is a really easy one to see. Okay, so oscillator one shape. Let's tap on that here. Let's turn the sensitivity of the controller down. Okay, so that's quite important because you're kind of sending CCs all over the place, all the time. CC, and it is it. If you turn it right down, the sensitivity is is it, it's easier to pick it up, sort of thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go learn like this. It's actually already learned it for me, look. And then you press the top controller like this to learn, learn the contr 
learn the CC, possibly because I mapped it to that already earlier on. Okay, so then oscillator one warp, I suppose we could map. So if I hit learn to this side. Now, if it, if it doesn't, 18, is that right? Yeah. You can you can easily just change the number because if it's it's if it's not understanding if AUM isn't understanding what this is doing you can literally just just change the number so you know the numbers the top is seventeen the bottom is sixteen the left is eighteen and the right is nineteen so as long as you know the numbers you can just put them in there manually but having MIDI lane is handy and then we could maybe go with uh, I don't know us. Oscillator two. Um, let's see. Oscillator one warp. Oscillator one shape. Oscillator two shape. We could, I guess, assign to. Let's do this. The. I'll do it again. The bottom one here. Is eighteen the bottom one? Is it? No. There you go. Well, you can go sixteen. Right, so now this one is checked. But the thing to remember here is you, you can set the range for the oscillators. So before I add another one, let's have a look what we've got here. And I will just map this to my key step. And I'll change the patch. So the top push is changing the shape. The bottom is changing the shape of oscillator two. And then the warp is so if we go to macros, I wonder if So let's find, try and find one that's got a macro assigned to it. Because some of them might, might have macros already pre-assigned. Hard to tell, I might have to do that. But you can assign the macros and then assign one of the controllers to the macro. And then you're good to go with that as well. So... So you could we could troll through some more sounds. See what... so you can hear the change on the oscillator. Now we've assigned some of the controls today we can also go ahead and say let's pick with uh, let's go with a bliss uh a bliss delay maybe and let's see we've got let's see what we can do with this so we've got some uh let's because we can really hear that let's assign a time to uh CC17 as well, so we can go and find the, the, the time for the delay inside the controller. So, and we know we're still on continuous channel, but Bleece will have been added there, hopefully. There we go, Bleece delay. And what did I say we were going to do? The actual, uh, just let me see, the delay time. Maybe because it was the last thing I actually touched, but let's see. Bleece parameters delay time. And we're going to assign this also to the top one there. And that might be actually, oh, it's right, that one. So. So. 
So we can now set, we can change the actual range. So it's going to be leaving it on at some degree, but not going to go to the max. So now we can see that we've got our... So we could we could then assign maybe the the right one, which is CC nineteen. They give you a really nice piece of paper, but it tells you the CC numbers on it. So CC nineteen. So CC nineteen to delay LFO and delay rate. Okay, let's do that. So continue, please. So the delay LFO and delay rate. Delay, LFO and rate, LFO and rate. Trouble is they change the bloody names of the things as they take them inside the, what's it, who knows, let's see. Um, LFO speed, LFO delay time, we could try that. So what did I say this was? CC19, well let's see if we can learn it first. So here we go, CC19. Let's do the speed of that as well. Now we're going to get a warning now that it's already been used, but I'm going to go to 19. also carry on and just go you can go mad let's go let's add some more stuff let's go let's let's add, let's go let's what else could we add? Uh, lfo amount frequency shift let's learn that to go this way actually i will i will set this to the left which is 18 because there's maps <laughs> literally map anything anywhere as long as you know the numbers and you do of course and you know you can see the as long as the parameter exposed and you can see the parameters what's nice is with AUM is it's very easy to control the range of motion on that particular and you, it's nice because you can invert it as well Will I be demonstrating it using pads and orchestral sounds? Not tonight. Oh, I did. Did you not? Did you miss the first? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll show you. the. Did you not miss the first sound was really nice. The thing is, what am I going to do? If I'm, I'm going to have to know exactly if I go into pure synth, I'm going to have to know the routines. And what do you want me to do with it as a pad and orchestral sound? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Like set up a violin so I can go wibbly rati vibrato and stuff like that. You know what I mean? That, you, you could, I don't think that the software that comes with this for the desktop is incredible for because they they've mapped everything perfectly. 
well, I would have to kind of really think about mapping something like that and what what to do with the mapping of it, you know, what I mean, for, for it to really sound great. I'm OK with mapping stuff that's available and I can see, but, you know, I mean, let me show you if you I don't know if you missed the first one, but the, the first one, let me save this anyway. I'll just save it as a uh, you don't know, touche five. Touche, maybe number five, <laughs> but it doesn't matter the numbers. So that's saved. That's done. Let's open up. Was it one? I, it's a, I've lost track of the numbers now. No, oh, that was one with alpha. Files, try to say two. Might have been two. No, oh, that's Sunriser. See, if, I could, if I'd have had more sense and used my brain, I could have worked on. I haven't got iSymphonic. I Don't work properly on me pick on me iPad. And I think it might be two shade three. There we go. So this one is kind of like that. You it's very, very creative. I spent a little bit longer setting it up to do something that was like more musical than just kind of assigning it to LFOs. The trouble is, right, you you don't be tempted to go absolutely nuts. Use it to be expressive. Don't need to use it all the time, otherwise it's going to sound nuts, you know what I mean? So, here's the sound. I'll turn the microphone down. sensitivity up So there you go. Touche. How to set it up with your iPad. I will go over this again briefly. You do not need the expensive one. You can do it with the SE because all you need for this setup is the USB connection. You do require a powered hub. This is really important. It will not work just plugging it into a hub. But I've got to me, like, you want to be playing it with a keyboard. Uh, probably, unless you've just got a, you know, an arpeggiator running. 
but you know, if you want to play it with a keyboard, you're going to have your keyboard in one in one of the ports, then your uh, touche in another port, and then it'll work absolutely fine, just like any CC MIDI controller. So you don't need to do anything in the software for this. It they've already default mapped the top, the bottom, and the left and the right. And again, the top was 17, the bottom was CC 16, the left is 18, and the right is 19. I'm pretty sure you can change that in the in the software, the controller software. But this is absolutely fine, you know. And like I said, in uh, you can map. You're not limited to just mapping one kind of parameter. You can map any. You can set a load of these to CC 16 or CC 19 or 18 or 17, and have it all doing all sorts of cool stuff. Or you could set it to do very gentle vibrato. Uh, with the LFOs and stuff like that if you wanted to do your kind of orchestral stuff um, It's probably likely that if you did buy one you've probably got a computer probably maybe not but probably uh, And because it, it comes with an absolute ton of really great software it works with an app uh, its own app kind of thing its own thing on the desktop called Lie, which is uh, like a, 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 a shell a VST shell and it allows the mapping of this, and it comes with a load of presets that have already been set up. So it's just, it's re literally awesome stuff. It really is. I will be doing some videos with this and the desktop software as well, but they'll be proper videos. So, you know, the sound. This is uh, a nice thing for the iPad. And I will be doing one as well pretty soon, I guess, for the CCs as well. So we'll use, I don't know, maybe the. Uh, probably the mini brute 2s because you know we can access the cc's on there and then we can use this as well so it's, it's, it's not the cc's the cv sorry cv because if you've got modular it runs with uh, that kind of stuff as well anyway guys listen thank you very much i hope you enjoyed that um like i said i i, I know that it this it's expensive and and i got it sent for reviews and demos and things like that um but I think it's, you know, having expression and being able to control, like, you know. Things like this is really nice. It's really, really nice. I What was that other one I really liked I did set up with the, was it the first one I set up? No, that, oh, this is a good one, though. Lovely jabbly. I wish, do you know, I wish I'd have done it and remembered what I'd actually set up for, oh look, sunrise had crashed. Um, what I'd, what I'd, what I'd call a blinking things, it's got to be number, is it number three, do you think? I'm going to, I'm going to give up, I'm not giving up until I find the one I want. And it's not the first one. So it might be number one. I, I so wish now that I'd have named these the synths that I used. This is it. I like this. It's really cool. What I like to do, it's very nice for tapping stuff and getting rhythmic things to, to, to work. And like I said, like we looked at before, we can set this up to not only control your synths, but you can your effects as well. Multiple ways to to set this up you know
possibilities are literally endless as, as, as spend as much time as you want mapping stuff to all sorts of places very cool very cool indeed um Guys, I'm going to let you say ta -ra to each other for a few minutes. Thank you very, very much for joining me this evening and where we took a look at the Expressa V Touche controller. Yeah, but in particular, it's setting it up and getting it to work with your iPad, as you've seen, which is just very easy because it just works um, because it's a CC controller. There's nothing you need to do. And it's exactly the same for the Touche SE as well. Okay, I will see you guys later. Bless you all for watching, and uh, yeah, brilliant, cool beans. Chada.